we will meet a variety of people and we will build complicated personal relationships with them. There are various types of relationships such as friend, work, romantic and family relationships. It is important to remember that relationships are as individual and different as the people who are part of them. There are different expectations in every relationship. Sometimes these expectations are made clear by talking about them, but other times they're just unspoken rules that develop as people spend time together. In this series, we're going to talk about the different aspects of relationships with different point of views with Dr. Malcolm Fardis, Kiana, Adam, and Sonas. Today's topic is how much to share with others. The effect of what others think of your partner. Let's start with Adam. So how much, uh, let's start with uh, how much should a parent play, uh, how much should you share about your relationships, about your dates that you're going uh, with parents. Let's talk about parents and then we go along with friends. So how much should you share with your mom and dad? So I am a good person to ask this question because I used to That's tell my I mom asked. everything. <laughs> yes. Say, Mom, I'm going on a date tonight. Mom, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And I realized that mom takes everything so much more serious than it is. And I might just think it's a little date. And so she might think it's like we're about to get married and it's the first time I'm meeting this girl. So I realized that I do not tell my parents anymore like about my relationships and it's worked out. It's the best way to work out for me. So. Uh, Kenna, do you, uh, do you uh, like share everything with your parents about the dates you go on, the people you meet with? Uh, do you share all the personal things that goes on? So I'm the person who has that six month rule if I do pass that six months, I'll start sharing things. So you don't share. And why, what is the reason why you don't share with your parents? Well, I mean, that means it's not that important to like, share the information or to bother with it. I will let them know that I'll go out with this person, but you know, it's n I won't like, make a big deal out of it. Do you share, son? You know, when I was younger, I used to share, I didn't, I didn't, I kept everything a secret. So they found out in the worst way and they were really mad. But right now, since I'm really close to them, they know everything. I mean, we talk super open. Well, why do you think that's the reason? Why now than before? Because, I mean, they kind of already know like what I did or something they got angry about. They, they know everything just came out in the open. And so now they're just like, she can't really do any wrong. <laughs> uh, do you, uh, like they Kiana, do you think it's their judge, judgmental point of view about who you're dating that you just don't want them to find out until you get serious with that person? Or you, you, I feel like the way you're just saying that you just don't want to bother them, I think there's more to that. So. Well, here's the thing about family. When you start something, you have to explain the whole thing. And if that person is not even serious to you, why would you like even share? And, bother with it. No, <laughs> I just don't share much. Adam, I'll talk about, let's talk about friends. Do I tell How my friends everything? I, I tell them everything. I, you know, my, okay. So there's There's two a aspects, difference right. uh, between a best friend and just a friend. Like for example, you're going through a breakup. I know, I know some people like, uh, from my personal experience, like uh, they come to me and then they ask for advice, like this happened, that happened. And I find out like they're talking uh, back to this, like, like to the next door neighbor or like to the guy uh, they ran into. Uh, like they say everything. So what's your point of view? Did I do that? Do no, no, no. Okay. <laughs> this question. Maybe this is a personal grudge we got to talk about. Like, no, no, yeah, yeah. But uh, so how much, do you tell, how much do you tell your friends about the relationship? So I, my, I have to separate always my work and my personal life. Work is very private, very, everything is very organized. I don't have to, I cannot talk about. Okay, sure. But in terms of my, uh, in my personal relationships, do I talk, I trust the closer circle, inner circle of friends that are close friends, I do mention everything too. Mm -hmm. And I do that because I try to run ideas, thinking you know, better, different perspectives, and see what their take about it is. If whether I'm in the wrong, the person's in the wrong, specifically to relationships. Um, so those friends knew, know a lot of things. Maybe more things than they should know. Okay. When it goes out to a little bit deeper, the, the ex, ex, like external friends are not the ones that are best. I think I do, depending on their credibility and so forth, more selective in that sense. So. What, what, what do you mean by maybe they know more than they should know? 
Well, what do you mean by that and why do you share more than they should know? So for my best friends, I, I maybe in attempts to ascertain a certain answer from them, for example, if I'm dating a girl that's not good for me and I have explained something to you as a friend, if you were my best friend, uh, and, I, and you came back and said, no, I think everything's okay, go back out with her, everything's fine. And I still really wanted you to give me that acknowledgement to say, no, she's a bad person or sell you on it. Then I would maybe get carried away and I would sit, tell you more. Uh, and then you would, you, you, to try to get to, get to my intended objective. Um, and part of the reason is that when you're emotional, I think we all have victim of, we say a lot. We, we, when we're emotional, committed to something, especially in our personal relationships, we expose more than we should to try to get to that person. Uh, so, how much should a friend uh, comment play a role in your relationship? Mm. Like whatever you're sharing with them, and it depends. Like if you're easily influenced by someone's comments, then I don't think you know who you are and what you want, and you just want someone else to tell you what to do, and you're really lost. Like for instance, again, I'll just go back to when I was younger. Let's say in my twenties, I used to talk to my friends a lot about what was going on. Right now. I don't talk to anybody outside really my family. Like my my mom and my dad have become like my closest friends. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. It's just they're older. I'm older. They're they're my friends right now. So I don't really talk to anyone or get anyone else's commentary. I don't go anywhere for it. Uh, Dr. Faddis, so I got a question. So from their point of view, I feel like uh, they sometimes they share or even me or people we share with friends to get their input to uh, kind of get the acceptance like uh, s what we're doing is socially to see if what we're doing what uh, the actions we're taking in our relationships are socially acceptable uh, how much do you think that plays a role well, I feel like um, uh, how we invite other people into the space of our relationship I, this is how I see it that by telling somebody about what's going on in your personal life, you invite them there. The same way as you're uh, judicious and careful in terms of who you invite to your home and when and under what circumstances, the same kind of judgment needs to go in there, which is who is it that you invite to the private space of you and another person. Uh, this can be a positive thing, it can be a negative thing. Uh, some of the examples that came up is you actually do get some perspective of somebody else's um, viewpoint on your relationship and that way it could be constructive. Um, the ways in which this could turn out into um, perhaps somewhat of a negative experience, and this is something that happens often enough, so I, I felt the need to comment on it, which is we might be unhappy about something um, that happens in our relationship and then we bring the negativity and present it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. This I see a little bit as a betrayal of the relationship. That's something that happened in the private space between you and another person. You disclose elsewhere. Um, mm -hmm. In addition to the betrayal, so this is an like example of somebody who, who comes in and tells their friend or mom and dad, you can't, oh, I can't believe you know, how, how much of an inconsiderate person my boyfriend or girlfriend or spouse is, and this is what they did, and I, this is how they behaved with me, and I feel so hurt. And th this is what we hear uh, relatively often. But two problems. One, I think, is you betray that person's trust. The other thing is um, the person that you are speaking with, that person could be a parent, could be a family member, could be a friend, that person has their primary loyalty with you. Mm -hmm. So the moment that you start talking bad about your significant other to them, you turn your family member against your significant other. So you see how this is going to actually yeah. end badly because when you make up and you go back to your significant other, then your family member is going to be, uh, uh no, 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 this I, I don't like this person. You shouldn't be with them. So, but uh, let's say you're going through a fight with your spouse, with your, you need somebody to talk to, and you don't want to betray that uh, trust. Who should you go to? Besides a doctor like right. you. <laughs> well, you know, this is, I feel like, you know, the, uh, the judgment that, that uh, perhaps we were talking about a little earlier, this is where you exercise it, which is think uh, one a step or two ahead of time that, yes, and right now I'm in a rough patch with my significant other, and I want to talk about this with someone. 
but then what if we make up? You know, what are the com if if I present this per person's problems to my family, are they going to turn against them? Is that going to be irreparable in future? So this is where you exercise the judgment in terms of who you seek the advice from. Not only you pick that person uh, with with caution. Um, I feel like. Um, this type of conversation could go wrong in one other way too, which is the person you are speaking with isn't qualified to actually give you guidance for a variety of reasons because maybe they have, for, think about it in you know, a hypothetical scenario, that you have a man, a um, young man who has a girlfriend and then goes to a female friend for advice on the relationship. That female friend happens to be interested in this guy. Is she in a good place and in a good position to actually mm -hmm. give impartial advice? The answer is no. So this is where I feel like we have to be careful. Before you go to somebody for help about the relationship, you need to know who that person is, how much trust you can place in them. Are they somewhat um, impartial and in a position to, in fact, give you good advice, good feedback, and some direction? This, this is where I feel like you know, we actually should probably spend the most amount of time of thinking about who we want to talk with and what it is we want to tell them. Uh, sh should there be a difference, uh, maybe I should ask this or uh, from the, you guys, should there be a difference before I go to Dr. Fardis? Uh, Piana, I'm going to ask you, should there be a difference uh, between a friend and a parent, what you share with? or? Uh, do you go to a parent first because you know they care more about you than a friend? I don't go to a parent. I actually, you know, I don't think I'll go to a friend or a parent. I'll try to woman up and go to that person <laughs> and solve it up. Yeah. Solve no, but somebody Sorry, you need it, somebody to talk to. So who um, would that person? Who should that person be from your point of view? A friend. Because family, remember, as doctor said, they're, they're loyal to you. They will be on your side. They cannot get his perspective. So you need someone else that can see. So maybe yeah. not, a, not even a best friend. Maybe like just somebody who's just a friend that is uh, neutral in the yes. not taking sides. Yes. What's, uh, what's your point of view, Adam? Uh, I am... I gauge and categorize my my communications to certain people, right? So I go to my friends with personal when it's relationship advice because they're more in this they're more in the the equation. They're more aware of it. They have more experience in the area because there's a reason for them as opposed to maybe my parents or who were 30, 40 years ago, they they were you know in the dating game or whatnot. Um, and so I, I trust them, my friends, a lot. But do you think like um, parents are more caring, so they would they might be giving you a better advice than like a friend that I don't know. You c might be a friend now, might be an uh, enemy the next day. Well, better the question of better advice. I don't think so. I don't think that they are. You know, they might not be as as you know aware of the situation or familiar with the norms and everything else that's going on at the time. Um, in terms of caring and un, un truthful, genuine loyalty, uh, that depends on the person. I mean, some people are very good at obtaining that. Me, personally, I've been so fortunate. I've got a good amount of, you know, good circle of friends who I, I trust with, and I trust in every realm, financially, mentally, spiritually. Um, and so then I can have those, maintain those connections and have those conversations. It's not an issue for me to, to have, you know, loyalty or not. Both sides have it. This side might just be more experienced in that area. Dr. Faris, do we need somebody to really share this stuff with? Or uh, do you think it's just uh, you don't really need to share with anybody? Like if I, if I have a fight with my wife, like uh, we're going through an argument, maybe I'm not comfortable with uh, talking with my parents nor my friends. Uh, should I be sharing it with somebody or should I just keep it to myself. Well, once again, I repeat that that somebody matters a lot, who that person is, where they come into this equation, um, what sort of loyalty they have with you, can they be impartial or not. As I think we all agreed, uh, some people cannot be impartial. Your primary first degree family cannot be impartial, especially if it's in a fight between you and a significant other. 
Uh, as a matter of principle, I think, yes, it's a great idea for us to talk about uh, those difficulties with, with somebody, whoever that person is. Because when we are within an experience, it's very difficult for us to sort of step out and look at it in a global way and look at it in a longitudinal way. It's extremely difficult for us to do that. So that other person, um, and if there's more than one uh, data point, you know, that you can talk with more than one person, possibly, uh, they give you some alternate perspectives that you may not have thought about. So in terms of its worth and value, yes, I believe it, it's, it's a, certainly a, it's a worthy endeavor. But uh, the person and uh, what type of quality of feedback you can get from them, that matters more to me. I see. So let's, uh, let's uh, switch roles now. Let's say can I just mention one quick okay, thing? I have to disagree with um, all of you guys because I just don't think friends, I, I guess I just don't have friends. I'm very antisocial or what, whatever you want to call it, only child. I think your parents can really help um, guide you because they've been through a lot. I know mine have, even with me and my boyfriend, if we have an issue, they actually may take his side and say, no, you're not seeing the right way. They see him as their son. So I think that my parents, bottom why, line, their family is your why number Why do you call yourself antisocial? I mean, I think I'm, because I don't have, I guess I don't ever have a circle of friends that I really trust this day. It's been God and my parents and that's and it. Why and do you think it's a... It's just, it's just what it is. Maybe I'm just, like I said, antisocial. <laughs> Anyway, so back to Amir's question, uh, but that's uh, all I wanted to let's say. Let's just switch I role. think your parents, uh, yeah. Uh, how, should you, when somebody comes to you, should you uh -huh. just be a listener, or should you give advice, even though you don't have a... See what they want. If, if they're looking for someone to just listen, do that. If you know you're the other person, then just give them what they want. Um, for myself, as why I don't go to friends or other people is I am very stubborn. I've already made up my mind about what I want to do. I don't need to go to someone. I might just just want to vent, say this is what happened. But in the back of my mind, I already know what to do. I don't really want a response from them because I'm going to do what I want to do in the end. Whatever they tell me is going to go out. I mean, I'll just be like, okay, that's great that you think that. Okay, but I know what I'm going to do. Uh, my mom might have a, a stronger influence on me because she's speaking from years of wisdom. I respect her, her age and her experience and her sacrifices as she's been married to my dad for 30 some years. That's huge to me versus someone my age who hasn't even gone through any little bit of what she has. So if she tells me, look, you better listen to him. It wasn't right. You should apologize. She's going to be more of an influence on me than I think just someone. Uh, Dr. Fares, let's wrap this up uh, and uh, yeah. make a conclusion statement about our discussion. Well, so as far as I think, you know, um, inviting other people into the space of your relationship, this I feel like, you know, can be done as long as there's some judgment in terms of deciding to who one speaks and how much. There is one form of uh, inviting other people into your life that I do caution against. This is what we call triangle. Uh, what that essentially means is, you know, there's you and a significant other. And then, uh, especially in the context of ongoing relationships, that you have concurrent and uh, ongoing relationships uh, problems that you can't solve. And then you create that triangle, you pull in a third party. And what that means is instead of communicating with your partner, instead of investing time and energy in them and in the relationship, you start uh, investing energy in that third person. The triangle is a harmful thing for a lot of relationships. Uh, how we form triangles is we, instead of resolving a problem with a significant other, you only complain to another person without really doing anything for the relationship. Uh, this is one example of a triangle. Another example of triangle, which might be subject for another conversation at some point, is affairs that because you have ongoing problems with a significant other that you can't solve, you take away some of your emotional investment from this relationship and you place it elsewhere by uh, creating that type of relationship with somebody else. So still, I guess, you know, there's more to be talked about. Uh, as a general rule, it's good to um, seek somebody else's wisdom uh, and also good to pick that person wisely. Okay, I guess that's all we have for uh, today. Thank you so much for your input. And thank you all for your comments. Uh, thank yes. you for being with us. Uh, True love isn't found. It's good.